This is the EMF Audio 5500 AF, and we're going to do some real-world in-car testing. This is actual power you will actually see in an actual car connected to an actual speaker, not a resistor on a bench on electrical that you don't have. So, this is what we've got. Uh, just like the 7500, we've got three sets of inputs, a remote input, a remote output, and then on the other side are all of the adjustments. We've got all the normal stuff for your crossover, subsonic, phase, that kind of thing. Uh, but one thing that we do have on all of the AF series amps, the uh, 2000, 4000, 5500, and 7500, is our clip limit switch right there. So we've got it enabled. We're going to turn the gain all the way up. And this amplifier is not going to clip no matter where we have the head unit set, no matter what volume, and like that this will not clip. How do we know it's not going to clip? We've got an oscilloscope right here. So that's going to show us at our peak power that we're going to be testing, which will show up here. That's going to show a clean wave. Now, among all this data, yes, you'll be able to see SPL, which doesn't matter in this case, but that's going to be our power. We've got our voltage, amperage, uh, DC voltage, which would be an indication of clipping, in there our impedance which is z and our volt amps and volt amps is not the actual power i'll do a whole separate video on that at some point but that is what you might get if you did uh, a current clamp and a voltmeter and then just multiply the two numbers together that's what you would get uh, that's not the actual power because of phase angle so this is our head unit we're going to turn the volume all the way up we're going to go to our subwoofer volume and we're going to turn it all the way up and we've got the gain setting all the way up. So this should absolutely clip without a doubt uh, if we didn't have our clip limit switch on. So we're going to burp it and uh, see what kind of power we get. Now, as you can tell, I do not have the car started, so I have no alternator power. I'm just on the caps and I forgot to charge them. So they're sitting about 13 and a half volts right now. We're going to try that. And then we'll try it again with a little bit higher voltage, 14.4 uh, around that and see what we get. Okay, so that is 3,145 watts at 1.7 ohms. And again, this is rated for 5,500 at 1 ohm and 2,750 at 2 ohms. So we are right in line about where it should be. Uh, it's not exactly 2 ohms, so we have a little bit lower impedance, a little bit higher power. So on 13 volts, we are getting right around rated, a little overrated. So we're going to charge it up again to 14 volts. Give it another go, see what happens. But as you can tell, this is a clean signal. All right, now we are sitting at 14.6 volts. We'll do the same thing again. Four thousand one hundred eighty. Uh, but also notice that the volt amps here. 5,000 is what you'd be getting if you just tried conventional meters versus a little over 4,000. So there's a substantial difference depending on how you're reading it. If you're comparing uh, amp to amp or test to test, anything like that, 5,000 versus 4,180. Okay, I'm going to try another frequency. Okay, at 1.4 ohms, we got 4,000. 846 and if you're going off of volt amps it was 5978 so over rated if you're using that method or some other test equipment might not quite read it right well over rated at 1.4 ohms and uh we're pretty well on pace or a little bit high uh for 1.4 ohms i'm gonna try another one see if i can get it down to like maybe 1.2 i'm not sure that we can get it down that low with this sub in this box. All right, here we go, trying another frequency. So 
So 1.3 ohms, 4,930. Uh, I think that's about as low as we're going to be able to get it uh, and still stay within mechanical limits with not having to go to a crazy low frequency or anything like that. But rated for 5,500 at 1 ohm, 1.3 ohms, we're getting 4,930. So it is uh, definitely an honest rated or a little bit over on the 5,500 AF. Available on emfcaraudio.com.